Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Still feeling a little bit groggy, I'll be honest with you. So this bug that's going around, uh, looks like it's a uh, four to six week or so. But anyway, I'm two weeks in now, I'm not feeling too bad. Um, so today, the lad, most of the lads are out. Uh, we're gonna go and check on a couple of them around the corner in a minute because um, I've got a, a tipping body around there that I wanna convert from a tipping body into like a hook loading tipping body, if you will. So I'll probably have to move the chassis rails and I'll probably have to shorten the body. But if I shorten it, I'll shorten it at the headboard end as you need to put an air for aim on with like the hook bar. Yeah, and then at the back end, we need to put some roll, rolling wheels. Um, so we'll go around and check on them in a minute before we uh, shoot off up to Jackson's because we've got a tra uh, bucket on the trailer there. Uh, but Luke's just run me, He's, he is actually at Jackson's and uh, we're just doing a couple of bucket repairs, but there's one of them that's beyond repairing on site, really, so we'll bring it back here. That's why we're going to swap it for that 20 tonner there. Um, we've just got this Gamma uh, Kempi Earthhead mask. Um, I thought to myself, why not get a, a nice uh, Kempi mask to match the uh, fast mig? Like I keep saying, I'm very, very impressed with that. So if I'm impressed with that, I'm hoping that I'm going to be impressed with the, uh, the Gamma Earthhead. But I will do a review on that over the coming weeks as I get to use it. As you can see, it's even got work lights on it. I think that's pretty damn cool. The screen actually opens up as well for grinding and stuff. So, so yeah, let's uh, we'll look at that. Uh, on the uh, front of the trailer here, we've got a new Defender 90. Now then, um, for the viewers, well, the Fabra has bought this. Um, as the van sat over there, I am using both vehicles. This is more for towing trailers, from flying around from jobs to jobs, measuring up, looking at jobs, and um, saving a lot of time basically than sat at 56 miles an hour being in a five ton van. Um, I have sold my M4, which was uh, a new M4, and it was just sat in my garage basically. And I thought to myself, it's just going to lose money that. Let's buy something useful for the company, well, the Faber, and, uh, and get something nice along the way. Nothing fancy, just a little 90, but I, uh, I am very, very impressed with it so far. You know, I might put a few, uh, few lights on the front. Um, we've bought the registration to match the van. WF 73 Baz. So we've got uh, WF 23 Baz on the van. Uh, we're just going to wait for the transfer to go over on that. Um, like I say, nothing fancy. We just want to... Uh, I just thought I'd put a bit of money into something that uh, would be helpful for the company um, with the Fox's approval. Yeah? Uh, so, we'll just sit down round to our uh, plant yard director and we'll show you what's going on with the body. All right, so that's the uh, old body that I wanted to use and convert into like a roll-on, roll-off body. Uh, and the chassis underneath it, I don't think it's hooked up there, is it? Yeah, there's no tipping bar on it. So, Cal, that chassis, scrap it, yeah? Right. Cut, it up it into, up. cut it up into uh, sizable pieces that'll go into 20 yard here. Yeah? Um, anything that's scrap in there, magnetic scrap. And just these men can go through and see what's sal salvageable within the skip in the skip itself yeah sheet arms could come off uh the headboard we're going to cut down try not to damage the tailgate at all if he's going to drag it out now just be careful dragging it out don't use them little chains on front there that'll snap them yeah yeah there'll be too much weight in that body all right we'll drag it out i'm not bothered about any of this being ripped off here because we're going to take all that off anyway yeah. the yeah, old yeah, mug yeah. guard and that all right um but the tailgate is a little bit damaged, but we can soon sort that out. That's not a big issue. It's probably been sat here about five years out, so we might as well make some good use of it rather than uh, rather than it just being sat there. Not only that, anything that gets sat there like that just gets uh, filled with uh, rubbish, like a shelf. If there's a shelf in a building, it just gets filled with rubbish, doesn't it? So there's a lot of new buckets uh, sat in the yard here now at the moment. A lot of Strickland ones there. For a smaller Louis Gong machines. There's a rake of new buckets here. 
and let's just take a, a walk over uh, the plant yard director that is our bucket stock pile all them buckets are good to go all go further back now then the ramp we have had a load of machines go out like i said first couple of weeks of january we've had a load of machines go out but also we've had a load of new brand new machines come in which i'll show you now now these are louis gong machines which is one of them here as you know foxy is now a louis gong dealer within the uk and there they are there mainly 13 tonners but we've got 20s uh, we might have a couple of couple of 50 tonners but they might be still down at the wigan depot mainly 13 and 20 tonners anywhere that we put into the higher fleet so these will start going out soon as all the others have so anybody that hires a machine off us now pretty much will be one of these and it will be a brand new one all these have got blades on the front so you've got a 13 tonner with a blade on as well zero swing now these are uh is that a 14 tonner there a 915 yeah so that's a little bit of a bigger machine we've got a new case uh cx210 long reach there that's also in the higher fleet well everything in this yard is in the higher fleet there's nothing for sale in here it's all in the higher fleet a couple of doors are sat there waiting to go out we've got more strickland buckets over here now they have these that been named up yet so when each all the buckets come in we name them all up with a little uh with a little tag as you can see so they've all been named up let's see if there's any in the workshop that need doing martin is there any more buckets to name up right also they've been done no no with that. oh paul's on with them now so, so. I'm going to go down there and have a look, see what there is to do down there. Right, look so that, that um, most of the stuff in that body can be strapped, aren't it? So we got Paul here who's uh, named up. How many buckets have you named up in the last couple of days, Paul? Probably about 50. 50? About 50. So yeah, all we do really. I mean, we used to weld the name on, but now instead we just get these layers of cut and uh, weld them on. But I'd, I'd say yeah, <laughs> that'll be changing to Fox pretty soon. All right, son, when you're done with these, give them a lift down there, yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, dude. And if I ever build a bucket, it'll have that on it. Well, the farber. All right, and we will actually, uh, at some point, uh, do my own buckets. I have done a few in the past. I don't know if you might have seen them on Instagram. But um, I do full hard ox, uh, hard ox buckets, yeah? If anybody's interested, but... They are big money, so not many people want to pay big money on buckets. So here's a, a front view look of the machines. And I'll tell you something now, these machines, yeah, are, are brilliant. I know people, uh, people like the Hitachis and people like the Volvos and people like the Cases. Yeah, all operators like their own machine, yeah. But let me tell you something, why don't you just try one of these, hire one of these, see what they're like. And, uh, and then make your own, make your own uh, mind up. I mean, if, 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 let me just put myself in Fox's uh, shoes right now. Right, one of these, say you could buy, I don't know how much they are. If you're gonna put them into the higher fleet, it's an absolute no brainer to buy one of these when they're just gonna get abused like they get abused in plant hire, yeah? So, but in fact, today, director, we have to go to uh, the, the Lubigong dealer over in Wigan, so, uh, we'll go speak to the, the guy who's running that department when we get there, all right? And let him have a little chat. And we'll show you the new machines that we've actually got in stock for sale. So all these machines here now, um, Foxy has bought through Hurt Plant or, one, or through Fox Group, I'm not sure, but um, these are all our machines to go out on hire. Okay, so I've just had a call of our Luke, who's at Jackson's actually uh, doing some bucket repairs. Uh, he needs some gouging, uh, gouging bits for, uh, he's got the 85 on site with him, uh, plugged into the mains, so he's taking some wear strips off and just needs some uh, consumables. So we'll just fly to Express before we go to Jackson's. Okay, so 
Okay, so we're just in Express now, just getting some uh, consumables for the plasma that we'll take out to Luke up in uh, Bullwood. But whilst we're here, we'll just look at this little set that Finn's got in, a new uh, DeWalt battery pack set. Right, Tell us about it. So what the ESAB have done is they've used the existing Renegade yeah, and they've gone for um, a cordless welder basically, but they're using the DeWalt FlexVolt system Right, so they're just you. normal, what, 18 volt batteries or something? Uh, this will switch off now when I open it, I think. It's using the... Uh, well, hang on a minute. <laughs> That's all right, it's still running. The 54 a volt, um, 54 volt, 18 volt, 12 amp power batteries. Right. And it's got four of them. It's quite a clever design, really. So if you have an issue with the batteries, which does happen, you yeah. can just swap out a battery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then... So what's the cycle like on it? Um, we tried it. We got 14 3.2 rods out of it. Um, 14 3.2? Yeah, at 120 amps. Um, we run about 20 minutes, which is pretty good. You've got to remember, these are not for production. Yeah. They're for snagging and maintenance. And yeah. taking out and doing jobs. So we're looking at 140 really volts there. 140 and, amps, and yeah. I'm oh, sorry, 140 amps. So we're looking at what is that? Nine is minutes. It's going to run at nine minutes. So if yeah. we drop that, that nine minutes will go up with it. Yeah. All oh, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. yeah. See so yeah. what we're saying now. Oops, right. that's the menu you've gone into there. Right. Uh, just switch that off. Yeah, so that. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite a nifty thing. But you tell me, you want to try one out? Yeah, we'll have a do. We'll bring it down and. Have a have a go with it, yeah. yeah if you want, well, uh, you never know. It could be handy, if, yeah, for like carrying up top of a scaffold yeah. or something for them, that kind of thing. We have you know the what I mean? building trade. We have the Lorsch one as well. We've got the Lorsch. Yeah, yeah, the AccuReady, um, but it's it's just at the moment it's under redevelopment. The Lorsch it's been withdrawn from the market because they're going to upgrade the battery technology and bring another one out. Right. But I've got one. We could compare them anyway. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Give me, give me one of them, not now obviously, but give me yeah. one of them and the yeah. Lorsch, yeah. and I'll compare yeah, it yeah. We'll do for a the viewers yeah. to, to, uh, to see which is the best one. Yeah, brilliant. Are you happy for me to do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, we'll, have a, we'll come down and have a play again, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. brilliant. So if you guys uh, do want to see these, and um, which, we, which one's the best between the ESAB and the Lorsch, leave it in the comments. I think that's the best way around it, isn't it? Yeah. See what uh, the viewers want to see. Yeah, perfect. Looks like a good bit of kit to me anyway. Yeah. Right, director, let's go. All right, so I don't know where Luke is. He'll be on site somewhere. But this is what he's working on at the moment. He's putting a few new wear strips on this, uh, this little bucket. What is it, a 13 tonne of this? 14 tonne? Yeah, a little 14 tonner. So this week in particular, Luke has actually done uh, quite a few bucket repairs on site, which is what we do do um, when they're not too far gone. But if it needs a new bottom on it and a new tow plate and new adapters, then we will take it back to the workshop, which is uh, what I'm being told about this bucket that's down the, the quarry at the moment. That we'll go and uh, we'll go and get there's our uh, little 85 plasma there. So he has been doing a lot of gouging, uh, and that's why I've just dropped him a few bits of consumables off in that box. And a pair of welding gloves, etc. All right, so we'll uh, we'll head down the quarry. So this is the bucket that we're swapping out. So I need the full loop floor. And we might do the tow plate. I'm not, I'll just see how worn them adapters are when, we, uh, when we've when got it washed off. But it needs a full loop floor for starters anyway. This is one of our buckets anyway. So it must have been here, uh, must have been here for a while. And it is a case bucket. Can you see how the, uh, the pins are with inside the bucket itself? Usually come like that from case. Well, we'll just bang this Strickland bucket on it now.
Right, so we're down at the CDE wash plant here now. We might as well just check on that bit, we're out here. Make sure everything else is running smoothly. Everything seems like it's flowing nicely. This is the log wash. We do have some paddles to change in here. And the panel uh, brackets that mount to the actual big tube. Well, that will be coming up in a, on an on an up and coming job. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just feeling for any vibration within the housing and the heat. So that's all fine. There is, a bit of, there is a bit of vibration in that to be fair. So what I think we will we will do is uh, like, like we've got this the stub end in the workshop haven't we so all we really need is to buy that, that full bearing assembly there to put on the stub end that we've got in the workshop and uh, it'll make it easier and cheaper next time round if one of the if this one was to fail. So yeah I'm quite happy with that. Let's have a look at the drive end. Let's have a look at the drive end. Oh, that bit. Okay so at this end we've got the drive end. These two uh, big shafts will be powered from behind here. That's a big motor can you see? That electric motor that's what drives it so we'd have to take all this off really but looking inside there they look fine there's nothing that's collapsed anyway just the panels to change that's all good So we'll just have a quick check on Luke. So as you can see he's been gouging the old wear strips off there. Just hang fire Luke. Is that your last one to go on? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I'll see how it was nice welding that on the uh, on the uh, uh, Warriors. Is that a 330 that? 350. 350. 350. So. 350. Single. Right. So look, that is actually Luke's own welder. No, that one's mine. That's my welder. Oh, that's yours. Yeah, is this, this one is then? Yeah, welder. Is it? Yeah. That's the, is it? Yeah, yeah, but he's been having some issues with it, so Dave asked me to use. Yeah, like Bannon, bring it back to airs then. <laughs> yeah, I know they are. This will, this will weld Ali, yeah? yeah? Yeah. Are you using that wrist rod? Yeah, yeah, that ESAM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's it running? Is it all right? Yeah, Smooth? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I knew they had one of these here, but I, went, I, I, didn't, I, went, I couldn't find it last time I was here. Oh, it's a cracking mold. It's quite clean it out, really. Tell Dave we'll get it serviced for him. Yeah. All right, and uh, bring it back to the workshop. These lads aren't going to use it, are they? So well, the welder, we're just going to do it. You know, so that's a, that's a good welder. We'll, uh, we'll try running it on Ali and see what it runs, how, how it runs on Ali back yeah. in the workshop, yeah. Yeah. So what you're doing is swell the other side of these now and... Yeah, you put, weld that one and I'll flip bucket over, put it on backwards and weld the other side. Are you coming back to the yard then? Possibly. I might have some other stuff to yeah. do here. Yeah. Okie dokie. See you there before you leave and I'm sure I'll he'll find you something to towards the end of the day, yeah. yeah. Alright kid. Sound good. Right, we'll speak to you in a bit. Yeah, sound good. All right, so this is a typical roll-on, roll-off skip. You see how we've got the wheels at the back? Yeah, and then we've got the uh, the, the bar at the front that the uh, hook hooks underneath, so it's only a six metre body, this. Now then, the chassis, the sub-chassis, is wi a lot wider on, on a roll-on, roll-off than a normal truck, yeah? 
So Callum, on the one that's going into the workshop now. Yeah. The C-section that's already there, so you'll have two C-sections like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just cut it there and cut it there. Right, and leave them on the body yeah, floor. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. so the new ones that come on are gonna be wider. They'll be out here. Yeah. Yeah, so you've got all your dimensions here off this. I've ordered that, I've ordered the bar, I've ordered the two wheels and I've ordered the two shafts. Now then when it comes to the headboard, cut the headboard off on the one in the workshop yeah. and I want it all making out of eight mil. Right. All right. Eight mil, you can make it fancy as you want. Put a bit of put a bit of this C section in it if you want. Stiffen it up a bit because these skips get pulled about with diggers. Right? Well once they get offloaded, they move them about with diggers, push them about here, there and everywhere and damage them. That's why all the headboards, if you look at this one here, so it's all damaged. But you just get abused once they're uh, off on site, offloaded on site. So this one we're just gonna try and beef it up a little bit. It's actually going into the workshop now, so let's go and take a look at it directly. Right, so this is the old bug guard section. Tell that can be cut off. This is the C section I'm talking about that you can cut down. Yeah, you just cut it right. Just, in fact, just sit like a box section in here, run the plasma right down it, take it off and leave a bit on. Just to give it a little bit of extra strength, yeah? Uh, get all that out of the way, get the bug guards out of the way. As we go down the body, we'll take the old spring assembly off. We don't need that because the hook loaders have a, have a sheet system on them themselves, you know. Um, the back end, we'll just have to wear that up where the wheel's going to go. Yeah. But as you look at that skip as it's going on there now, you'll see that uh, we need to fit wheels to this body the same. So the wheels are just below the sub chassis, you see? So we'll have to make these brackets, but we'll buy the rollers and we'll buy the shaft. Yeah, so all that lot can come off, Cal. That body's obviously too long, so we'll have to cut it down to six metres. All right, cut it down at the headboard end, leave the tailgate as it is. All right, straightforward enough. Nice little job, that, actually. You right with that? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, sorry. Right, so, director, we need to go over to Louis Gong at Wigan. Okay, so we just had a call. Uh, I think I was running a J45 for us. He's got a rip in the mag belt, so that isn't repairable really. We're not going to bother repairing that. We'll just uh, put a new belt on it. So, I have a belt in stock. I'll, uh, I'll give Paul a ring and uh, he can go and fit that. Alright, so we just got to the Louis Gong yard in Wigan here. Uh, I'm just waiting on Jag coming down. And uh, I'll just give a quick little shout out to R2 Construction Limited. Apparently, the uh, um, a subscriber on YouTube and uh, give a couple of cups to one of the managers at Argaff. So, cheers for the cups. And uh, I'll give you a walk around in a minute of the new, uh, the new yard, the workshop. Uh, well, it's going to be a PDI centre, really, not a workshop, but uh, for new machines that are going to be running out of here. So we'll just wait on Jed because he's just on a team score. All right, so this is Scott. This is the engineering manager up at uh, Hi. Louis Gong Yard here in Wigan. So what, so what? We're just, just after after some kind of latching mechanism, so when the gates are open, they lock in and they can't swing out and hit anybody. Right, if, so if they're caught by the wind. On both know, gates. Both gates. Um, right. Yeah, that's straightforward enough. So just a little post. A, po a post with a latch on it of some With a little latch. Yeah. As it, as it hits it, it just drops behind the latch. Yeah. Pick the latch up, close it Perfect. at night time. Yeah. yeah. Right, is there any other jobs we want doing in this yard? I'm sure we've got a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's have a look at the machines, director. So all the machines that you saw in our yard this morning, they have all come from this yard. I presume they have, haven't they? Yeah. About 30 of them, something like um, that. I think, I think 23 have gone to you guys. 23 have gone to us. Yeah. So this, this, this depot here is purely just a sales yard for Louis Gong, yeah? We, yeah, it's a um, predominantly sales facility. 
Um, yeah, that's uh, you know we we that's our biggest one at the moment. It's that's a, a 50 952 tonner. 50 tonner. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we've got a 933. You guys have had a 936 off us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we, we've got some some 20 tonners, 22 tonners. Um, so this is going to be the main sales yard, is it? Yeah. Yeah, and obviously there's satellite depots around the country. They're going to have a, a selection of machines for demonstration, customers to go and see, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, there's a yard in Scotland. There's going to be two yards in Scotland. Um, there's. Um, in fact, it. director, we've got to go to Scotland to one of these yards to sort some signs, aren't we? You have indeed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that'll probably be a next week job, that. But um, but I think there's I think there's the the seven or eight depots. Um, seven or eight depots around, around the country. Yeah. Right, so are we going to be looking at taking fitters on to to sort of all these uh, um, on the plant side of things, servicing side when it comes to the servicing regional side. Regional engineers, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they'd be home-based engineer in each area to start, um, and then from that. Are we um, going to be looking to take them on, or is that something coming from the Wigong? No, they're they're coming. They're, they'll be part of Fox Sales. Will they? Yeah. Right. Right. So there might be a few jobs available coming up. Potentially, yeah. If, yeah, you, yeah. if you if you live yeah. in that area, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, director, uh, all the machines I've got into our higher fleet that were in our yard this morning, which is good. Um, like I say, you know, people just want to give these a try, don't they? Because they're a good bus, aren't they? We've got some great bits of kit. Um, the you know, good engines, Cummins, Yamahas, um, ZF transmissions, gearboxes, etc. Um, Kawasaki hydraulics, Rexroth. You know, they're built of good stock. Um, yeah. And, and the, machines, the machines are decent. The, you know, uh, all the boom yolks are, are, um, are cast, they're not fabricated. The are decent bit of kit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strickland or Miller buckets. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, come, they come with, um, you know, really good features, obviously, air conditioning, cab care units. Um, Quick hitch is a standard. Yeah, yeah. So Jed, Jed's, Jed's in at the moment, isn't he? I'm just wondering if you wanted, if you wanted to talk uh, money wise on him. Do you know what I mean? That's that's up to Jed. That's I it, I, um, I deal with the yeah. engineering, not the sales. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll uh, I'll have a we'll have a quick word with Jed and uh, see if he has anything to add to this conversation. He, he'll, he'll point in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's all the jobs that we, you want me to do in this yard, other than sorting them barriers out. Yeah, well, no, your, your guys sorted them barriers out yeah. for us down that side. They yeah. did a cracking job there. Yeah. Um, other than that, no, I'm going to... Let's just sort these machines start flying out of this yard. Let's hope so. That's what we want, isn't it? Right, director, we'll go and uh, introduce the viewers to Jed. He's the... What's his, what's his job title? He's, uh, he's the managing director of um, the Fox Sales... Equi uh, Fox Equipment Sales. Fox Equipment Sales. So this is Jed Fitzsimmons, this is the Managing Director, is that right? Fox Equipment Sales. Fox Equipment yeah. Sales. And um, I thought we'd just give our viewers just a little, uh, catch a little few words off him, what he's got to say about this yard that we've got going on here. Uh, and like I said this morning, all the machines that are in our yard are on our higher fleet that have come from this depot. And uh, just tell us what's going on here, Jed, and what's coming on up in the future. Yeah, I mean, we've... Uh... Welcome to Wigan, by the way. Yeah, thank uh, you. you know, it's, uh, it's good to have you here. Um, you know, this is one of eight facilities from the top of Scotland. We've got Aberdeen, Glasgow, Durham, uh, the facility today, which is Wigan, uh, North Wales, uh, over to uh, Nottingham. And then we come down over to Evesham uh, and over in Plymouth. So, yeah, there's been a lot going on in the last four months, setting all the facilities up. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, one of the main criteria for us, because it's a strategic partnership with Lou Gong, is that, uh, you know, we have all the uh, facilities in place with parts and offices and yeah. facilities for uh, yeah. retailing the equipment. 
and uh, all of the facilities will have new equipment in them and that's all going out as we speak yeah uh, we've probably got about a hundred and odd machines that we've got here in terms of well not 100 it's probably gone down now we've moved a few out so there's probably about 40 machines here now that are ready for retail so yeah. uh, you know it's been a, a busy time with moving equipment out to uh, to the fox group etc yeah. with some new purchases that's happened there and then obviously the rest of the machines that are going out um, we're going to be uh, showing at Scott Plant in April as well. So, oh, you got uh, Scott Plant? Yeah. I might go up there myself, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. an impressive show and it's it's, yeah. uh, it's really well attended by uh, yeah. by everyone in Scotland, uh, you know, right from the Highlands down. So, uh, you know, it's going to be exciting for us because it's the first time that we've been yeah. uh, displaying there. So really uh, excited with the team. We've had a meeting this morning with marketing, etc., to make sure everything's uh, in place. So... Uh, a lot going on and what's it uh, looking like with this with this doors i've heard about a lot about this yeah doors. it's uh, it's really exciting i mean the dozers uh, won a red dot award for design it's yeah. a completely different uh, take on uh, you know access and egress in terms of not having to climb up on the sides of the tracks yeah you know you you gain access over the back through uh, three points of contact so it's a lot more safe what size doors are we comparing it to uh, it's probably a D61 Komatsu or a right. D6 yeah. sort of size, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was over in China just before Christmas and uh, it was phenomenal. I actually had a go on it myself and yeah, yeah it's a really, really good piece of equipment. It's yeah. got the Cummins engines in, yeah. hydrostatic, di uh, hydrostatic drive, uh, yeah, and it really is a good piece of equipment. And you sit in the cab and the visibility is just awesome. I mean, it's yeah. state of the art, which is why it won the Red Dot Award. Yeah. And uh, you know, so we've got the first few machines coming into the UK now. We put yeah. an order in from Fox Equipment Sales for some machines, so uh, they'll be arriving soon. So we'll be dis displaying yeah. them at Scott Plant. Are we going to start doing some material handles as well? Um, at the moment, we have got a few uh, in the range, uh, seventeen and twenty-one ton, and there's some more on the way. I uh, can't say a lot about that at the moment, but yeah, they, yeah. they will start coming more yeah. into the UK in different uh, sizes. But yeah, so there'll be a range of everything basically. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, full range of wheel loaders, you know, from yeah. 12 to 35 ton uh, wheel yeah. loaders. Um, we've got excavators from 1.7 all the way up to, there's a new 130 ton machine coming in this year, uh, which is exciting. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the dozer range, uh, aerial platforms, uh, electric aerial work platforms. You've been selling all these from this yard? Yeah, everything from here and the other seven facilities yeah. as well. So it's... Mm -hmm. uh, it's exciting. We've got uh, you know engineering manager and a team of engineers starting. Yeah. Uh, you know some already on board. So it's uh, there's a lot going on. That's for sure. Good, good. So yeah, there's a quick intro. I just wanted to uh, get Jen on camera for you guys, for our viewers to see what is actually going on within the Fox Group. So as you can see, big things are happening, and uh, we will eventually go around all the depots just to show you. And I'll probably go to Scotland myself with the director to do uh, these bit, a few little jobs up there. All right, Jed. Thank you. Thanks very much, mate. Cheers, thank Cheers you. Cheers for that. Cheers. Right, director, back to the yard. Well, make sure you get all the stuff in back. Making a mess. Keeping all this drawn and everything in it. Yeah, oh, he's already put some of it in back. Right, here. Let's go.
All right, so here we've got an exhaust off a 21 plate, eight wheel tipper. As you can see, it's run rotted away here. So rather than buying the pipe from the, to the end, <laughs> which believe it or not is an absolute fortune, um, we'll just patch it up that, we'll TIG weld it, we'll wrap a little piece of, uh, another section of exhaust around it and weld it up and patch it up, yeah. So, I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. 21 plate, rot gone rotten through like that on there and where it connects to the, to the chassis. Um, that, that's Volvo's for you anyway. I'm a scan you, man. Here, I'll show you where we're up to with this body. So we've got the C-sections uh, mainly cut out there now. We're going to leave them bits in. Uh, the new C-section that's just turned up actually outside now will sit about there, metre apart. Uh, we're going to weld another flat bar in here. It's got all this uh, badness out that was cracked. Thinking about it now, with what we've done there, as you can see, there's a bit of a bend in that. What I should have done is tack the new C-sections on before I cut them down. I didn't realise it had bent that much. You know what I mean? But it, but it has bent anyway. And it'll be cut about here. We're going to cut a metre off front end of it anyway. Get rid of all that headboard, make a new headboard for it. We're gonna make it a lot thicker as well. We're gonna do it out of eight mil. And uh, as you'll see over the next uh, couple of days, there's a bit of time that's going on on this anyway. I'll show you body outside that it's uh, actually gonna be like. So this is a PFC that's coming. Now the PFC for, stands for parallel flange channel. And then you've got an RHS, which stands for rectangular hollow section. And then you can get a CHS, which is square hollow section. And you can get, uh, sorry, CHS is circular hollow section. SHS is square hollow section. Uh, you can get beams, UB, that's a UB. So that's a universal beam. And you can get UCs, which is a universal column. Um, that's the plate that's coming that we're gonna use for the headboard. I'll take you over to the body. So this is a standard 20 yard skip. As it's Paul's just flipped it over now, we're gonna take it over closer to the workshop. Basically, so we can just copy off this underneath. As you can see, the uh, C-sections are a lot further apart. So we've got uh, a meter 65 centers there. So we're using a 200 B 75 PFC on that. So I've got some wheels ordered, some rollers, should I say, ordered, and, uh, and some pins. All we'll do is make the, the, the brackets to suit. And uh, at the airframe at the front, we can put basically pretty much copy off this skip. But it's always handy having a spare kit skip just to copy off. Yeah, it makes it speed, up, speed it up for us. So Paul's just gonna pull that over to the workshop. Right, Direct, we've got to uh, go over to shore. We've got a ZX250 that the uh, tracks keep going down on. So I've got a feeling uh, it might be passing on the seals or there could be a problem with the grease valve on it, but we'll go and have a look. So here we've got a ZX250-7, so that's a 2021 machine. Paul's static cab here, but it ain't Paul's machine. Well, I believe Roy's been driving this, has he? Yeah. yeah. And what's he saying wrong with it? He said it pumps it up, every, every two days it's back down. The track's coming down every yeah, two days? Yeah. Right. There ain't, ain't, ain't going to be anything wrong with these tracks. You know what I mean? If they're going down, they go down, down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Looking at that now, that ain't too far down. Yeah, we're going to pump it up. We're going to pump it up a little bit now. But I get this all the time. Yeah, we operators, some operators, not Paul, some operators. Yeah, they just not. They, they might, the tracks might have been full of muck yeah. as he's pumped it up, or if he's pumped it up. Well, let's just check the grease valve for starters. Now then, what could be the problem is if it's passing on the seals on the piston. 
Right, I can't see that being a new machine, but what we'll just do out, what we'll do now, we'll just dig out where the grease valve is. Here. And we'll check the grease valve for uh, any damage. If we can get in there and see it. Is your machine running all right, Paul? Oh, well, it needs a bar roller, doesn't it? Top roller? Bottom roller? Yeah, yeah. Right, so, we get your light on there, director. That's your, that's your piston there, really. All right. And now, what, that's your grease valve there. So there's no, just a lot. First of all, I'm going to check that that's tight. So I'll just get a socket, make sure that's tight. And then what will happen is that piston will come back there and that as that idler goes out. Yeah, sorry Paul. That's a 24 mil. So we'll just make sure it's tight for starters. Yep, nice and tight. Grease good on it. We got this all time, people. We got this all time of operators. There's never usually a problem, to be honest. Right, so that's, that's going up. Can you see it going up? Right. So that's took grease. If you look inside there now, you see how that piston's come out about 10 mil. See the chrome? Yeah. Right, so just make sure there's no grease coming from the actual valve itself. That looks fine to me. So now I know, now I've seen it with my own eyes. Yeah, we've got the four finger gap, right, so that will reduce, that will go more, should we say, because there's a lot of muck within the chain itself that's uh, going around the sprocket and the idler, so uh, as you can see, there's probably only three fingers, but there will be a four finger gap as that chain spins. The idler, if you look at the idler here now, one thing to look for is the block inside there, can you see how much gap I've got there? Now that's to the block the start of the block you see to the start of the block that block can come all the way to the end of the track frame so that idler will be out here so that's how much more you've got stretched to go on that chain so there will, there'll be nothing wrong with that I can't see that going down but if it goes down I'll, uh, I'll let you guys know there has a bucket just come over here I think for uh, these new pins. Now, why has he put it down on deck? Has he got a tooth? Did he drop a tooth off here? The, the operator, not? no? Right, so I'll just find out what's going on with this bucket director. So, as you can see, the chain's come uh, slightly looser now, now that the muck's coming out of the chain itself. But if you look at the pin while I'm keeping my eye on it, it's the piston to see if there's any movement in this piston in here. Yeah, there's no wrong with that. Right? Just lift your bucket up so the track frame drops. Drops. Put it through the ground. On. Right, put it back to work. Put it back to work. Let me know if anything if he does go down again. All right.
Right, so the bucket's lost the tooth, so I'll just check how tight the other pins are as well whilst we're doing this one. I'll put this one back on. So that's your pin lock. All right, so we'll always, we'll change that to a new lock. Just want to see how we, if we get any movement in these pins here. Yeah, we've got movement there, so that pins these change as well. I'm only just tapping the hammer gently. Yeah. 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 So they all need pins a lot. That's why it's lost the tooth. They just get worn, they just get worn over time really. Or when it had its last set of teeth tooth, somebody could have uh, reused the uh, the pins and locks if you will. I'm just gonna change them all. I'll do it, bud. So they're all nice and tight now. Won't have any issues with any more teeth coming off. Always better to change your full set of pins and locks, especially if they're getting worn like that over time. Right, so we're going to head back to the yard now. So I'm about to go to Scotland. Uh, I'm not taking the director with me today. I'm taking Paul up and we're going to go in the Defender. Take a trailer. We're going to go and fit some signs up at the new, uh, one of the new Louis Gong depots. Uh, so I just thought I'd show you where we're up to with this uh, little hook loader. Carl's got the C-sections in now. Well, there's some flats on the top. We've got the uh, sides in there, the flat bars down the sides. The wheels are made up. So we just need to get some 40 mil bar. And we'll sink them into the back end here. There's a headboard to go on it, and then the, uh, the C sections on the front. So, about end of play tomorrow, really, it shouldn't be far off being done. Carl's done all this on his own. Yeah, it's looking good. Did we write that today, Carl, yeah? Yeah. Any issues, uh, Isabel? Yeah. All right, lad. So, speak to you in a bit. Here's a little bucket that we've got to fit a brush to. Another job for uh, Andy Duckett. Farmer. This truck here is in for uh, a hinge repair. We open the door. You can really see now what you can't really see there now, but we've, we've uh, cut all this out and re-welded a new section in. Pretty much done. This truck is uh, actually sold. 
So yeah, it's six o'clock uh, Tuesday morning, and we are going to take the defender. We've got to fit some signs at the new Louisgon yard, so we just put some tools in the back, and uh, we'll take the trailer with the ladders and the pails. We've got some pails to fit on a palisading fence. All right, so I'll show you show you the yard when we uh, when we arrive. Do a nice little ride up to uh, to Scotland. Hey lad. Yeah, we've got luck. Don't we've be got, don't be making a mess in here. We've got stacks. <laughs> Rough stacks. Don't be making a mess in here, boy. <laughs> Alright guys, so here we are in West Calder and uh, that is just south of Edinburgh, Scotland. This is the new yard that we're going to be uh, selling the Louis Gongs from. I think it is actually uh, within Thomas Plant's yard, so whether we are renting a bit of the yard off Thomas Plant or not, I'm not too sure. But um, we've just flown up here at Defenders, took us three and a half hours. Uh, and the Defender is absolutely amazing. I'm just trying to flick the camera around on the, there we go. But the only downside to the Defender, I'd say, is the back door. I'm not keen on that back door idea there, as you can see it's catching the trailer. And the reason why we're here, with Paulie there, look at him. We, we're coming to fit these signs. Yeah, and what we're going to do, we're going to raise some pails and uh, make the signs more visible from the road as you can see the road level over there yeah I'm not too sure if we've got an office in there or we're going to put our own office here not sure yet but um, but yeah quick straightforward job three and a half hour drive but this is the issue that I'm talking about yeah close so now I see why people get discoveries over defenders, should we say, sometimes, because of that reason. But other than that, absolutely bang on. Pulls like a train. I know we've no weight on it, but we only brought a couple of sets of ladders and some pails. But when it has got weight on it, it still pulls the same. So let's get these signs up. Okay, so that's the signs fitted there. I'm just still on the footpath now. As you can see, that before they were a lot lower down on the fence. Now they're at uh, at the right height for as you're driving past, so you can actually see the signs. That's just another view of the yard. So I'll say within the coming weeks that will be uh, filled up with Louis Gongs as our Wigan Depot. Like I say, that's Thomas Plant's uh, office there. Three and a half hour drive back now, nice and simple. just a little update on this roll on roll off body we have bought the wheels in as you can see all we've done is uh, made got the bar in and made the uh, little hanger bracket for it we've got the c-sections in now in position with the flat bar welded on top uh, all the uh, the stiffener plates within the side 
we've basically just copied off another skip that we've got outside, another Thompson skip. Now these skips are quite big money actually off Thompson's. So this was a scrapper around in our uh, plant yard. It's been there for about five years to be fair. And uh, all we'll do once it is finished, we'll get it blast blasted and painted and it'll be like a new one. Do you know what I mean? That's one assembly that's put together there. And Callum's on me. I'm probably going to have to pull the lads off this job because uh, there's a lot of cladding just coming for the crushing shed and Foxy wants me to jump on that. So, Cal, the sheets have come in for the uh, cladding on the crushing shed, yeah. I've ordered a scissor lift. The scissor lift, Paul, as well. The scissor lift is even going to come today and tomorrow. As soon as that comes, we'll jump on that and get that done, yeah. We'll work out what, uh, we'll take the sheeting rails down that's already up there and bent, yeah. Take all the badness out and we'll just rebuild it. All right, so that director might uh, probably run into another chronicle. Probably run into another chronicle. I was hoping to get it finished in this chronicle, but looking at what the jobs that have come in now, I've got to go out to a ZX 160 that snapped a, a pin on the link arms uh, from the dipper to the link arms, so. That's priority because we've got wagons now. All right, so I'll go and measure the pin. I'll order a pin. If they can't get one, I'll have to go and get one made off Arvin, so that's where we're up to. Right, so might as well keep a time lapse on this director because uh, you can't be here to film this all the time. All right, I'll go and open this one three five. Okay, so now that we've got the headboard tacked on and we've got the C-sections in with the flat bars on the top. It did pull back nice and easy like no, I was worried about the floor bowing. Well, it come back nice and easy. All we needed to do was put, put some trestles underneath and push it back up dead easy. Um, like I said, we've got the 8mm plate on the headboard here. We've got some 200 by 100 mil box section. And we're also going to put some more C-section here, 180 by 75 C-section coming down like the airframe at the front for the pin. That's the C-section there. It's about to be cut up. But, director, we've got to go to uh, bake up now. We've got a, um, a little PT750 with a damaged belt. We need some clean three inch. So that's quite important that we go and fix that now. So. Oh, the Strickland bucket's come back off higher. So this is the one that went on higher about 10 weeks ago, up to bake up. So it's done, probably done about 400 hours. And now then, the only thing that I can say about it is, look, there's not much wear on the edge for 400 hours, but the edge did come loose. So what we've done, we've taken it off and replaced all the bolts and welded the nuts to the bolts, can you see? Now then, people do ask, why do we weld nuts to the bolts? That's exactly why we weld nuts to the bolts, because they come loose. All right, now then, that's the only thing I can fault with that bucket. Other than that, it's been bang on. And so it's here, so now I'm gonna send it on another muck shifting job, and uh, so I can keep an eye on the hours on the job that's going on next, so. So yeah, I'll keep you all updated on this bucket. Me and Cal are gonna go to uh, Bake Up to clip this belt. Right, director, we'll end this chapter here and now. And we'll start the next chapter here and now of me and Callum going up to Bake Up to fix, fix this belt, yeah? So please like, subscribe and share, like I always say, and uh, check out the other episodes. Cheers, I'll catch you on the next one.